Turn to page 19. 19, first and last verse. <laughs> Yes. 
I'm going to just thank for this beautiful day you provided us, Lord, and uh, come and worship and praise you, Lord, and thank you for your love for us, Lord, it means everything to us, and it just gives us guidance and direction, and we need to see you in each and everything we do in life, Lord. But we thank you for our church and the opportunity we have together here today, and Lord, we just want to lift up the people that's in need, the uh, many needs in the community, and uh, Lord, we just thank you for as we start this new year, seeing us through 2020, uh, and Lord, just uh, be with us and let us just really seek you in this new year that uh, we know you're involved in everything there is, but Lord, we just ask you to really be with our country as we proceed forward this year. And um, again, Lord, we just thank you for this love us and to give us a shortcut from our family and be with Brother Joy. Uh, as he brings your word today, and may it, may it touch each and every heart here today. Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> now, let's turn to page 328. First, second, and the last. 328.
Brother Steve need to discuss our offering. Let us pray. Dear God and our Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that you've given us today to come together and fellowship with one another and sing these songs and hear a message from your word. And Father, as we come to this portion of the service, we're mindful of everything that you, you've given to us and everything that you do for us, and we just ask that you continue to bless us in this new year. Father, be with us now as we give back a portion, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. again thanking you Lord for uh, this beautiful day that you've blessed us with and allowing us the privilege and the freedom to be in thy house to worship. Father we thank you for this gathering of folks and, the, and their families. We ask that you continue to bless them in a very special way Lord. Uh, remember all those who are sick with this deadly disease Father and uh, be with the front line people, the doctors and the nurses who are caring for them, and be with their families as they're, uh, most of them aren't able to uh, be with them, Lord, and we just ask that you be with the families too and give them uh, comfort and understanding. Uh, Father, we thank you for the praise reports that we've received this morning, and we thank you, Lord, for uh, these names, that, uh, those who have spoken these names that we need to add to our list, Father. We need to continue to pray for one another like never before. Father, we lift up our nation to you this morning. Uh, Father, it's in turmoil. And, uh, but we know, Lord, that uh, as Christians, as believers, we know, Father, that you're in control of all of this. So we can find peace and comfort in that and knowing that. Uh, Father, be it in our midst today, we pray that your Holy Spirit will move in each life, each heart that's here today. And Father, if there's someone here that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, we pray, God, that today will be the day that they make the most important decision of their life. And that is to ask you into their heart. Father, once again, we lift up all the names on our prayer list and all the names that have been mentioned today. And Father, we pray that your will be done, not ours, but yours, because your will is perfect. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Turn to page 52, we're going to sing one more, and I understand we have some special music this morning. So 52. All three verses.
conceit of the wounds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, O oh my God, how great Thou art. Apostle Paul. He knew what it was to experience God's blessings, and he knew what, what, what it was to be broken too. And there's nobody that has had the inspiration that Paul had uh, from Jesus. After Paul's Damascus Road experience, he spent several years alone with God. And that time Paul was alone with God uh, proved to be a very valuable time. Because God revealed to Paul during this time the strength of Jesus through the Scriptures. There's probably never been anybody that has gone through as much suffering and pain and hardship as the Apostle Paul did during his ministry. But God used these times to refine Paul, just like refining gold. Paul went through the, the fiery trials and he came out of the fire being one of the greatest men of the Bible in service to Christ. There's two things that Paul learned that we can learn also from this time of trials and brokenness. He learned uh, first uh, about his own limitations. About his own limitations. And he learned about God's unlimited grace. Now these two things are the most valuable truths that any of us can learn. 
when we think about our limitations, Paul learned that he couldn't live the life of a Christian on his own strength. And neither can we. And God wants us to see that. We have to come to the end of ourselves, to the end of our strength, and to the end of our abilities to realize that we're not capable of doing the good that we want to do, living in a way that's pleasing to God on our own strength and on our own knowledge. Turn with me, if you will, if you have your Bibles with you today, turn to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, and we're going to be looking at verses 18 through 25. Romans 7, 18, 25. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to, will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. If we don't accept the truth, that we can't do what is pleasing to God on our own strength. What happens is, we're going to keep on relying on ourselves. We're going to keep relying uh, on our background and our kin folks, both past and present. We're going to keep relying on who we are and where we came from, <coughs> our education and our own power, our own willpower. God breaks us to teach us that we can't live an abundant life on this earth or an eternal life in heaven without His help. We can't do it on our own power. Paul also learned that when he was at his very weakest point, that the power of God was released through him, through him at its strongest. Paul was always in touch with his weaknesses because of his thorn in the flesh. And turn with me once again in the Scriptures to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to read three verses there. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. And Paul said, And lest I should be exalted above measure, by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that He might depart from me. And He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For I am weak, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Whatever the thorn was in Paul's life, it made him feel 
insufficient. It made him feel weak. And his thorn in the flesh acted as a tool of brokenness in his life. And Paul had accepted it as God's way of bringing him to, to the blessing of knowing that God was sufficient no matter what his circumstances were. God's unlimited grace is most likely something that becomes the clearest to us when we've reached our absolute limit and our own ability to experience pain and suffering. God's unlimited grace is most likely something that becomes the clearest to us when we've reached our absolute limit and our own ability to experience pain and suffering. Our God knows exactly how much heat we can take in His refining process. When gold and silver are being processed, it starts out at low heat. And the impurities in the gold uh, act real quick to that heat and they rise up to the top, uh, to the surface, and then they're skimmed off the top. And then the heat's turned up a notch. And some more impurities rise up and are skimmed off the top. And then under the hottest heat <clears throat> is when the most stubborn and the most deep-seated impurities separate and rise up to the top where they can be removed. It's the same way in our lives. The breaking of our lives is in degrees. God breaks us a layer at a time. Amen. If God moved all at once into the deepest part of our lives, we couldn't stand it. We'd be so overwhelmed that uh, our wills would be broken and our spirits would be broken too. The things that are embedded uh, way down deep inside of us are the things that are subject to the greatest amount of brokenness. When those deep-seated weaknesses are removed, that's when we can say, I know God's grace is sufficient for anything. Paul knew what it meant to be refined by the fire. I knew a man who shared his testimony one Sunday morning. He had gone through a great deal of brokenness in his life. We talked about a similar circumstance in Sunday school this morning, but this particular man, one week, his wife passed away as a result of a disease that she had been battling for years. And then the very next week after she passed, he suffered a massive heart attack and had to have open heart surgery. And while he was recovering in the hospital, his youngest son overdosed on drugs. No. This man was strong in his faith. If he hadn't been, there had been no way he could have made it through all the brokenness in his life. And that morning in that service was the first time he'd been able to be back in church. And he stood up and he shared this testimony. God's Holy Spirit was so strong on this man that morning. The last words in his testimony that he said, I'll never forget. He said, I know God's grace is sufficient for everything. Amen. Amen. This man gained the understanding of God's unlimited grace, just like Paul did. Amen. There's several blessings that come from being broken. One is that we start to understand God better. We start to see that His commandments are just exactly as He directed them to be. We start to see that His promises are absolute and certain. We start to see that the way He does things and that His timetable in doing things are His, not ours. They're His and they're His alone. And we start to see that His provisions for us are complete. We start to understand the Scriptures better. The meaning becomes clearer to us. 
And we start to see how the Scriptures apply to our lives. And we start to have a better understanding and appreciation for just how much the Lord loves us. I know from a personal standpoint, uh, during the times of brokenness, and I think I've shared this with you before, but one thing uh, God's Holy Spirit revealed to me uh, during a time of brokenness uh, was that I started listening to the messages and the words in our hymns closer. I never had in the past. But when that time of brokenness, I started listening to those words. Not just the beat of the song, but the words and the messages in the song. And every one of our old hymns has a message in them. We start to understand better what it means to be accepted by God. We start to understand better the purpose of the cross. And we start to grow in our understanding of God's patience and His love and His kindness. And we have a better understanding of long-suffering, which is uh, patient endurance of pain and suffering. And we see and we know with absolute certainty that He is in control of our lives, totally and completely and eternally. And most of all, the breaking process always lifts high Almighty God and it lifts high the cross and it lifts high the grace of God to a higher level in our lives than ever before. What happens during these times that God, is that God allows us just a little glimpse of His glory. All of God's wonderful and magnificent attributes become clearer to us and more evident to us. We talked about last Sunday how God puts wonderful people in our lives along the way. And I'm so thankful, as you are, for friends. I talked with a good friend uh, over the week of Christmas that told me that he had been broken in a lot of ways in the year 2020. And his exact words were these. He said, I've come to realize that through it all, just how awesome Jesus Christ is. He said, I find myself wanting to do more and more to serve Him. That needs to be our prayer. In 2021, we need to be looking for more and more ways to serve Jesus. As we're broken, we come to a better understanding of ourselves, just like my friend. We start looking back at our lives when we were growing up. And we see how past experiences affected us. Some for the good, some not for, for the good. And we start to see flaws in our emotions and see how we have shown love to others and have uh, received love from others. And most of the time we see that all of us could have done a better job at that. We start to come to grips with our limitations and our weaknesses. And we see how fear has put a chokehold on us at times. Something else we start to see in our brokenness are our talents and our gifts and our abilities that God has given us. We see all the ways that God has given us strength and prepared us and designed us. And we see how God has dealt with us with His tenderness and His mercy. During our times of brokenness, I like to use this phrase. God becomes near and clear to us. We start to see and we start to experience things about our God that we've never experienced before. One thing that becomes very clear in times of brokenness is that we're sinners. We're all sinners. Brokenness always involves sin. The sin of pride. The sin of rebellion. And all kinds of sinful behaviors that God wants to remove from us. The breaking process shows us that we are continually and constantly being refined by Almighty God. And sin is being peeled from our lives layer by layer, just like an onion. 
it's a wonderful blessing to realize that while we still have the capacity to sin, we've been freed by the Lord Jesus Christ to denounce and declare that it's wrong and be forgiven of it and have victory over it. I like what Adrian Rogers said, that when you're saved, God doesn't fix you to where you can't sin anymore, but where you can't enjoy the sin. <laughs> That's true. Amen. When someone is truly broken and have totally submitted their lives to God, a peace floods over their soul that's beyond understanding, that's beyond explanation. And in that familiar verse, we're all familiar with Philippians 4, 7, it says, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We've talked about gaining a better understanding of the nature and attributes of God and ourselves uh, as a result of brokenness. And as we do, something pretty amazing happens. We start to look at others differently. We start to looking at others with more compassion. We start to see that others aren't any worse off than, or any better off than we are. We start to see that we're all sinners to the very core of our being. And that every one of us needs God's grace. And every one of us need that refining power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And every one of us needs to change and grow and develop in certain kinds of ways. There's not a one of us that doesn't have some kind of flaw or weakness. In and through times of brokenness, we come to, a, to a, 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 an humble place where we can say, Father God, you were patient with me. I can be patient with you. We can say, Father God, you showed your kindness and mercy to me. I can show kindness and mercy to others. Father God, you forgave me. I can forgive the person that hurt me. Amen. Brokenness will humble you. Brokenness will humble you. And it will make you not be critical and judgmental of others. It opens up a whole new bunch of ways to share the love of God with others. I believe it was the late, great Billy Graham that said this, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. No matter who you are, rich or poor, king or beggar, we're all the same. We're just old sinners saved by grace. When we come to our, the end of ourselves through brokenness, we start to have a a better and a greater appreciation of all the gifts that God has given us. Our hearts are renewed to be more thankful and aware of God's goodness to us. We appreciate life. We appreciate living more. And the hardest parts of our soul start to break. And when we laugh, you're able to laugh with more enjoyment because laughing starts to have more meaning again. And the same for crying. We start to have a genuine tenderness in our heart and our soul when we cry. Mm -hmm. Brokenness makes us more sensitive to God's presence. He comforts us and He gives us that blessed assurance that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And in the intimacy of our spirit, God's Holy Spirit speaks to each of our hearts with love for us and value for us and how much He wants the good for each one of us. Through His precious Holy Spirit, He assures us that He is with us and working in us. And when we feel assured of the presence of Almighty God with us, we are secure. And that's the greatest security that there is. God shows Himself to us as our all-sufficient God. Our total provision. Our ultimate protection. 
When he does, he releases uh, us from fear. He releases us from pressure, and from stress, and from worry. We receive a peace that we can't describe. A joy that fills our heart to the brim, no matter what our circumstances are. Now, none of the things that we have talked about this morning make any sense at all to those who don't know God or to those who know God and have rebelled against Him in their times of brokenness. But for those who yield to God's purposes in their lives and start to see and experience the blessings that come from brokenness, only then can they say, I'm thankful for this trial because He loves me and He's using it to refine me. Just like a piece of gold for His glory. There are so many things that we don't understand that happens in this life. Like the death of a child or someone that has to linger on in pain for years. I preached the funeral service of a young woman this week, only 50 years old, who died of COVID. Then <clears throat> last night, there was a young woman, only 54 years old, who slipped on some snap bean juice on her kitchen floor mm -hmm. and fell and hit her head and died. Mm -hmm. Things that you just don't, you can't understand why. You can't understand. And we probably won't ever understand it down here. It'll probably be when we get to heaven and we sit down at Jesus' feet and He explains these kind of things to us. Amen. One thing about it, Jesus is right in the middle of our brokenness. And He helps us in a supernatural way from being angry and being bitter and times that we don't understand. But we have to be willing to submit to it in times of brokenness. And when we surrender to Him, when we surrender completely to Him, He leads us on to victory. It might take some time for that victory to be realized, but it's victory that is assured. It's guaranteed. When we balk or when we refuse God during these times of brokenness, it's going to short circuit the blessing He has for us. Amen. I mentioned my cousin, Chester Calhoun, a great deal. And I share his testimony because it's such an inspiration to me and to others who know him. Chester exemplifies to me the meaning of brokenness that we've talked about this morning. I talk to him by phone as much as possible. He hasn't been allowed to have any visitors for just about the entire year of 2020 due to the COVID. He has been in extended care for well over a year now. He is a permanent resident there now. All of his earthly possessions, his home, his vehicle, all of his belongings were sold in order for him to be able to stay there. He's paralyzed and he can only lift his hands and his head just a little bit. He asked that I tell everyone here at the church how much he appreciates our prayers and how much he enjoyed the fruit bowl at Christmas. He said he especially enjoyed those grapes. He said those were the biggest, juiciest grapes he'd ever had. He enjoyed them. And he loves chocolate milkshakes. And uh, they started letting me bring items to the front door there at Extended Care, and they're real nice about taking things to it. So I'm going to continue to with the milkshakes about once a week. Mm -hmm. But he tells me, every time we talk, he said the only way that I can keep my sanity is to know the Lord is here with me and, this, and that this is His will for my life. He said, I don't understand it, but I accept it. And that if I wasn't in this condition, who knows? I may have ended up being some kind of hellraiser. 
He said, but I'm not bitter. He says, I love my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And His grace is all I need. He said, if my situation can be an inspiration to just one person to put their faith in Christ Jesus, it will have been worth it all. God loves each one of us so much that He never gives up on us. He never forgets about us and He never loses interest in us. And He never rejects us. All He asks is that we put our trust in Him to be our God so that we might bring Him glory. Every one of us has gone through or will be going through times of brokenness. Remember what we've talked about this morning and put your faith and trust in Jesus. Amen. May we pray. Father God, we thank You for Your Son Jesus. We thank You for what He did for us on the cross. We thank You, Lord, for Him being our refuge and our rock to turn to. Father, in this new year, we are turning to, to, to Jesus more than ever, Father. Because we're in a situation, Lord, that most days we don't know which way to turn. We don't know what to do next because of one thing after another that we're faced with. But Father, we know that You are in control. We know that You have a perfect plan for all of this. So God, when we are faced with so much stress and so much anguish about the, the state of affairs in our, in our land, help us to... To, to go off to the side, Lord, and have a quiet time with You. And, and Father, You just recalibrate us and show us that You are in control of all this Amen. and that nothing can, 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 can rattle that. Lord. We just thank You for having a plan for each one of us, Father. And we know that plan is perfect. Everything that You do is perfect. So we gain hope in that uh, each day. Father, thank You for this time that we've had to look into Your Word and we thank You for uh, each one who has listened today. And we pray, Father, during this time of invitation, if anyone needs to make a decision, that this is their time. Thank You, Lord Jesus, for Your love and kindness and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Brother Will. Page 230, verse 2nd and last. Verse 2nd and last. Page 230. As we stand and sing. Anytime, love to have you. Uh, do we have a, anything before we need to before we uh, need to say before we dismiss? Don't forget the ladies auxiliary is trying to phone, and we'll meet January the 11th, which is the second Monday at two o'clock here at the fellowship hall.
January the 11th at 2 o'clock, ladies, in the fellowship hall. And don't forget to pray for Peggy. Yes. We miss Peggy. We miss Peggy, I my miss goodness. Peggy. I called and sang Peggy Sue to her over the phone. Oh. <laughs> and I got her to laugh. She said, don't make me laugh. She told me all about it. Miss Peggy is precious to us and we miss her. You tell her that we miss her. Yes. She's an icon here at Union, that's for sure. Okay, if there's nothing else, I'm going to ask Brother Benny, if he will, to dismiss us, please. Lord God, we love you, God. Just, uh, God, we just pray that 2021 is a year of reunion for the United States. Mm -hmm. We uh, bring this back around to you, Christ. Mm -hmm. God, we just uh, ask you to be with those that are shut in or sick in need. God, we just uh, we miss those icons, God. There's been a lot past us. And a lot ahead of us, God. We love you. Just thank you for this new year. We just bless, ask you to bless this church and its extended family and guests. God, we love you all this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You did good, Sam. Thank you. It was nice to have you.